Hello, uh, my name is Evie. I'm 14 years old. And today I would like to talk about a topic that is very dear to my heart. Happiness. To be honest, I think that in mid-2020, I wasn't the happiest kid. In fact, I was quite lonely. I was so deep into the water that I actually got scammed in an online game at the age of 12. <laughs> you can laugh, but that is for another day. Making real friends is not as simple as it seems, so me, again, in mid-2020, tried to make online friends. And as the time went by, I realized that I was spending too much time on that instead of the things that I was supposed to spend time on. So of course, that didn't really work out. But that is also for another day. Moving into a new school was difficult, especially because it was during August 2020 when the COVID pandemic had no hopes of resolving and in addition to that, I haven't moved from my old school in eight years. So although at first I struggled to find my stride, I eventually made new friends and settled into my new school. So how did I do this? I did this by trying to take my interests and show it to others, hoping to create something in common. I believe this is due to the power of similarities. Similarities can be anything. It can be a similarity in your favorite TV show, book, or movie. It can be a similarity in absolutely anything. Similarities can act like a bridge between you and another person. When finding out that you have a similarity with someone, you might want to be friends with them. And although I do not believe that this is the main defining factor of friendship, I do believe that it could at least be a trigger to start your friendship in the first place. I also believe that having a lot of similarities is possible by having a wide range of interests. So from that, I would like to go on to my next part of the presentation. My childhood. During my childhood, my parents constantly encouraged me to try new things and did not force me to master any of the things that they encouraged me to do. So because of that, I learned that I could trial and error. I could make mistakes. And by the time I grew older, I would understand what I liked and what I did not like. So without further ado, here is a presentation of my childhood. Um, okay. This is a photo of when I was 10. My parents wanted me to do martial arts because they thought they would help me defend myself. But as you can see from these insightful photos, uh, I wasn't really interested in martial arts as I was interested in running around, playing around, and doing my own thing, like many 10-year-olds did. Uh, now, this was a photo taken many years ago in a chess competition because many years ago, I used to do competitive chess because I thought it was a fun game and it would help me focus in school. Next slide. Now, this was a very interesting era as well. Um, I really like literature, so because of that, I decided to join a book review competition, which I actually won, by the way, so have to look back for me. Clap. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you. On the bottom, you can see me in school musical production. I really liked musicals at that time, especially the musical Hamilton that I memorized by the back of my hand as it was no ordinary life. It was more of a raging obsession. So due to that, it inspired me to try out new things, and that new thing happened to be a school musical production where I played as Good Fairy number three. The top right here is when I was really interested in poetry, so here is a very fruitful take on poetry that I wrote quite some time ago. Now, what would I like to say from this whole presentation? Why is this 14-year-old girl talking about her childhood? How does it have any relation to her topic? Well, this is important because I would like to say that the things I did in the past really shaped who I am as a person today. For example, I do not think that I would even be standing on the stage right now if I did not join that school music production all those years ago to conquer my stage fright. That I joined, by the way, just because of my clinical obsession for musicals. This is the present. So I started golf at around late 2018 and I still play now. And I even join competitions from here to there. Also, I play music. So this started from piano when I was quite young and I wanted to expand my musical knowledge 
And now something I'm really focusing on is being a bassist for my school band. Okay, moving on to the next part. Now some people, including me honestly when I was younger, said that having a broad range of interests is not a good thing because it dilutes your focus, therefore leading to less of a high performance. But is this really true? Well, for elite scientists, this does not seem to be the case. Elite scientists were known to be interested in many things, such as music, art, and sport. This was especially the case for Nobel Prize winners, who had a 22 times bigger chance of having a broad range of interests than normal average humans did. Now, while I was researching this topic, I asked myself, well, what if this only works for elite scientists? So maybe you guys are asking this. So I will answer that question. No. Let's look at some examples. Leonardo da Vinci, one of the greatest artists of all time, was known to have many interests, such as nature, mechanics, physics, architecture, and much more. In the business world, Steve Jobs took a calligraphy course in college and later credited it for Apple's beautiful typography, which was very rare at that time. In the sports world, for all the tennis fans, Roger Federer dabbled with many sports as a kid and only moved up to tennis in his later teenage years. And now, as you may know, he is one of the greatest tennis players of all time. So to answer my question earlier, it works for every single field. David Epstein, the author of Race, suggested that having a broad range of interests was a good thing because you can take knowledge from one field and apply it to another. He also believed the idea of generalists and specialists, whereas generalists are people who do not focus on one specific thing because they have a broad range of interests, and meanwhile, specialists are people who focus on one specific thing and are usually really good at it. Now, however, I believe in his theory, but I would like to add on to this. So let's go back to Da Vinci. Da Vinci was known to have many interests, just like I stated earlier, but he was also known to have many friends. And when you put it next to my story of utilizing my childhood of being encouraged to try new things and having a broader range of interest because of that, I do not believe this is a mere coincidence. So is it? Like I stated earlier, having a broader range of interest is a good thing because it can trigger similarities with others. And this goes to my next part. It leads to a happier life with more friends. People who are happy and have more friends tend to do better in life as they create a positive and energizing loop. What is the evidence for this? Well, a study from the University of Pittsburgh that involved 1,399 participants suggested that having a broad range of interests is a good thing because it improves your physical and mental well-being. It makes you healthier and happier. Another study also showed that for every new happy person who adds to your circle of friends, it increases your chances of happiness by 15%. Sounds pretty good, right? So let's give an example. Once, I had to skip a day of school to participate in a golf tournament, and although I was behind from class because of this, I was able to catch up using the help of my generous friends. So in the end of this experience, I was happy. Now, what we've concluded so far is that having a broader range of interest is a good thing because you can trigger similarities that are leading to a happier life with more friends. So before I end this presentation, I would like to share a message to any parent watching this right now. If your child shows interest in, let's say, a guitar one month after showing interest in something like football, do not be upset. Be happy. Because maybe your child would just like to take a generalist approach to life by having a wider range of interest, like me which is proven to be able to give them a chance to be happy. And in the end of the day, isn't that what you want for your child? Happiness? Have an amazing day. Thank you.